Remember the first time you played the House of the Dead at the arcades and held that light gun in your hand, eager to throw your whole wallet at it to beat the game? Yeah, well I distinctly remember dropping tons of quarters back in the days, hoping that I can get good enough one day to beat it in a single credit. You know, sometimes the local operator will even be kind enough to let you start with five lives, or even set the difficulty a bit easier. Well, what if I told you that the difficulty level is a sham? On today's episode of Behind the Code, we'll go over how the difficulty settings work and how it benefits the beginner players and makes it a bit tougher for the returning players. Let's start with the basics. Most arcade machines have a test menu that allow you to test certain game aspects to make sure they're working properly. Today, we'll be using Model 2 Emulator as I don't have my arcade machine set up at the moment. To access the menu, you simply have to press F2, and this will lead you to the test menu. You can navigate using the service button, or F1, or with the player 1 or player 2 start buttons, which is 1 and 2. Under game assignments, we can see the difficulty setting on the top line. There are five options, very easy, medium easy, normal, medium hard, and very hard. And each of these settings will affect the difficulty of the game, with normal being the default setting. Now let's take a look at how each of these settings affect gameplay. One thing to note though, regardless of setting, headshots always get the same amount of damage and the same amount of points. So whether you play on very easy or very hard, you can easily get through the game headshot by headshot without any trouble. And it will also not affect your score in any which way. The only difference in difficulty though happens when you don't go for headshots and mostly go for body shots. Here's a good place to see it in action. On normal score runs, oh, no! going for a headshot on no! Simon, which is the name of this muscular creature who's about to launch the researcher over Thank the ledge, you. is very risky, so shooting him oh, in the body is no! normally the play. No! Let's see how many shots it takes to take him down on each difficulty no! setting. You, no! As you can see, on very easy and medium easy, it only takes three shots, while on normal and medium hard, it takes four, and on very hard, it takes six. This is how I knew that the owner of the machine at All Amusement Fun Center in Burbank has a default setting to very hard, hoping that he can get more people to use continues, especially at a dollar per credit. But Dad, you mentioned earlier that the difficulty level was a sham. This seems pretty normal. Right, right. I was getting there. So what if I told you that the difficulty setting isn't static and varies during the game depending on how well you do? What happened? Why don't you follow my instructions? Yep, you heard me right. And here are the details that the original game developers added in, stealing your money quarter by quarter, hoping that they would go unnoticed. This is terrible. Let's start here by opening up the main program at Ghidra. Now I've started to analyze a portion of the data already, but it's way far from complete. Okay, now that we have Ghidra open, let's go ahead and skip over to this specific function here at 21CA0. Now, I want to make this really quick because there's so much more going on in this function, but um, I just want to cover five different lines that will be very important to see what's going on. Um, and I'll try to explain it on the way. It's, it's a lot to go, but you know, trust me on this. Um, let's try to get through this quick. So the first line here, we're going to load. That's what LD is. That's the first uh, four bytes here. We're going to load a value at RAM address 51FE14. Now, at, he, at this location, the game stores a timer. I called it run clock. Maybe run timer might be a better term for it, but um, it's a timer that starts when you first insert your coin and hit the start button, and it stops when you game over. So basically, it continues on, and it goes through the game, and then the rest of the game uses this value so many different ways, and um, that's a lot of either RNG or certain things that happen in the game rely on this running timer. So this function is no exception to that. Um, so in run clock or run timer, we're going to store that value into G5. G5 is a global register, um, basically like a variable that you can store and load stuff. So this is number five. Uh, 
So we're going to store that in G5. Now the next line we have BB8. Oh, well, no, not that BB8, but hexadecimal BB8, which is actually a integer value, integer value of 3000. Now we're going to store that into G0. And then we take that G0, 3000, divided into our run clock, and we want to get Remo. Now, Remo is just the remainder, an ordinal number, uh, remainder of that value. Now, why is that important? Uh, I'll explain that right now. So the next line I want to cover is this here. This is, uh, we want to load an ordinal short value. Short values are just uh, two bytes long. Um, at RAM value 51 EE12. Now what's important about this value? This is where the game stores the difficulty level. Very easy has a value of 1, medium easy is 4, normal is 7, medium hard is 11, and very hard is 15 with 15 being the maximum value. Let's skip the next few lines but here we have compare integer and branch if it's not equal. So we're going to take our G5 value, which is the remainder value, and we're going to test it if it's equal to zero. Now, what, is, what does that mean? It means, so every 3,000, well, 3,000 frames, which is what the timer is, every 3,000 frames, we're going to have a remainder of zero. And we want it to do something when it equals zero. So when this value is not equal to zero, we're going to skip the next line. But what happens if we don't skip the next line? G7, which is our difficulty level, plus one, because we're adding, is stored back into G7, which is our difficulty level. So what does this mean? Well, I'll tell you what this means. It means that for every 3,000 frames of the game, or roughly about 52 seconds if the game runs at 57 and a half frames per second, the difficulty value, not to be mistaken with the difficulty level, will increase by one. This is terrible! And what about all those other lines of code in that function? Well, if you happen to lose a life, whether it be by taking damage or shooting a researcher, the difficulty value decreases by one, making the game slightly easier. Now if you lose all your lives, then the value decreases by five. And if you choose to continue and the difficulty level is at zero, then it increases back up by four, otherwise it increases by two. Now the difficulty level also increases by four if you start a two-player game, meaning that a starting difficulty of very easy is not possible. So to test this out, let's go ahead and load a game starting with very easy. A few things to note, at the top left you might have noticed some text going on. I included that so that we could see the difficulty value at 51EE12 at all times as it happens. And about that shield, yeah I'll get to that. I also modified the game code so that instead of the score, we can see the frame count as the game progresses. Now let's take damage so that we can get the difficulty level even lower to zero. Alright, time to activate my shield code and sit still for 13 minutes. And we're back. So now that we're at level 15, theoretically we would be in the very hard difficulty setting. So let's venture back out to the Simon at the bridge and see what happens. As you can see, six bullets weren't even enough. I mean, it would have been if I started shooting a little earlier, but I felt that so many times at All Amusement Fun Center. So many dead runs because of that. But I thought this was on very easy. Now let's do the opposite and start at very hard and purposely take damage until we get as low as possible. Sure, why not? So now that it's on very hard, we start with a value of 15. And every time we take damage, we lose 1, making the games just slightly easier. 
if you notice here, every time we lose all our lives, it decreases by 5. But when we continue, it increases again by 2. And as you can see here, when that value goes down to 0 and you continue, the value goes up to 4 instead of just increasing by 2. Now let's head over to the same bridge and see what happens this time. We should, in theory, only need three shots. No! 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 And there you go, three shots. Thank you. Now let's just die again and jump back to the test menu to verify that it's on very hard. And it is. So what does this all mean? Well, to summarize, for the beginning players who are most likely to take damage and use continues, the difficulty level will stay low enough to where the game shouldn't give too much trouble, regardless of the difficulty setting it's set at. But it still doesn't help you if you don't know how to defeat the chaotic creatures who are tough to defeat in the later stages. But now, for the returning players who want to improve, yeah, it gets a little more complicated. Here's a quick summary of everything we talked about for those who skipped the beginning and went straight to the end of this video. Let's start here with the number line showing the difficulty levels. If we start a game with normal settings, then we start here at 7. Now add in a second player, and we jump up by 4, putting us here. When 3000 frames passes, or about 52 seconds, the difficulty will go up by 1, with 15 being the max. If you lose a life by taking damage, such as when a lonely Ebiton comes in and swipes one at you, or if you shoot a researcher, then the difficulty level will decrease by 1, making it slightly easier. If a player loses all their lives, then the difficulty level goes down by 5, with 0 being the minimum. Using a continue when the level is at 0 increases it by 4, otherwise it'll increase by 2. With the game increasing in difficulty every 52 seconds, if a player started a game on normal and played perfectly without taking any damage, then about 7 minutes later, or 52 seconds times 8 levels, the difficulty will be at its max, or 15, equivalent to very hard. Now this would take place normally in the second stage, in the transition between the bedroom and the research center. It's that bridge where you have that PKNB all the way in the distance. If you don't know who PKNB is, then I suggest you look on my Twitter and you'll find who PKNB is. Now why did I take the time to make this video? Well, it all leads down to posting my record score online. Let's take Twin Galaxies for instance. The difficulty setting must be on normal, and the test menu should be shown to verify that. I saw that there was one instance where someone could not get their score verified because of that. Now, with everything that I showed previously in this video, I think I can prove that one, the machine was set on a more difficult setting from the beginning, very hard to be exact, and two, even if it was on normal, everything past the second half of stage 2 would have been on very hard since that's when the difficulty setting would peak. Hopefully referees or adjudicators will be able to use this video as a reference for score runs that don't have access to the test menu to verify their difficulty setting. With that being said, we've reached the end of this video. Now I hope you were able to learn a thing or two about how the difficulty works and stay tuned for my next video where I go over some scoring glitches and why they occur and how we can fix them by modifying the program code. And until then, stay safe and thanks for watching.